Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Film Jumbo. Today we'll be going over the dark truth about Bar Rescue. Let's get into the video. Everyone knows how big of a Bar Rescue fan I am. I watched the show like a maniac and I even planned a tour that took me to bars that were rescued by John Taffer. But I am not an idiot. I know the show is scripted, worse than professional wrestling. However, I could never get anyone who was on the show to confirm it to me until now. Recently, I came in contact with Maria Bidiant, a real-life person who was featured prominently on the fifth season of Bar Rescue. However, I don't think the word prominently translates to accurately or glowingly. Her episode titled Emergency Exit portrayed Maria as an entitled spoiled distraction who was sucking the life out of a bar called Murphy's Law in Reno. The show explained that Maria owned 40% of the bar while her ex-boyfriend also owned 40% and a third partner owned 20%. After an opening scene outside the bar where Taffer is very critical of Maria, he later convinces her ex-boyfriend to fire her. The episode is your typical bar rescue storyline, after the bar is initially depicted as a business in complete disarray. The stress test is a disaster, the staff eventually comes together, the remodel is out of this world, the grand opening is a success, the credits explain that after a short period of time the sales of Money Bar went up 20%, but not so fast. Like I said, it doesn't take a reality TV guru to know that Bar Rescue is produced to attract viewers, not to tell the truth. Maria couldn't have made this more clear. How about we just start from the top? The opening of every show explains that the featured bar is ready to pull open the doors, bust out the books, and make a call to Bar Rescue for help. While Murphy's Law didn't end up pulling open the doors and busting out the books, it never made a call to the show. Believe it or not, Bar Rescue contracted various Reno area bars to gauge interest in appearing in an episode. The show dialed up Murphy's Law and Maria says it was the worst decision they ever made to accept their offer to rescue the bar. The original call from Bar Rescue came in late September 2014. All filming was complete by March 15, 2015. Once the show converged on Maria's bar, it didn't take long to realize that there was an engine at play. Maria doesn't dispute that the bar had issues, but what she does vehemently deny is the type or cause of the issues Bar Rescue portrayed the bar to have. You just have to watch the first minute of the emergency exit episode to see the writing on the wall. Maria is immediately labeled as a puppet master, and all the editing and sound bites of her from that point on paint a portrait of a toxic individual who is suddenly destroying a business. More on what this portrayal of Maria did to her later. At the start of the show, there is an epic meltdown by the owner who controlled the minority stake in the bar, Nelly. While the cameras rolled, Nelly decides to walk off his bar shift while hurtling expletives and flashing obscene gestures at Gary. The two men and Maria happen to take their disagreement out into the parking lot right at the same time that John Taffer exited its recon vehicle. A major confrontation takes place. The whole scene seemed, to put it nicely, less than spontaneous. This will be the theme throughout the entire filming. Maria explained to me that the main producer talked to all of Murphy's Law employees who appeared on the show separately. Roles were developed and certain behaviors encouraged. As for the smaller things that occur on a reality show to make a telling preconceived story easier, all employees were required to wear the same clothes throughout the filming. Also, just like what Bryden Vukosin told me about The Bachelorette, show producers had the Murphy's Law staff perform certain tasks and scenes over and over. Some of the manipulation was more damaging. The couple sent in as part of Taffer's surveillance operation definitely wasn't going inside to offer impartiality. Encouraged to showcase Murphy's Law as an incompetent hellhole, they did just that. Interestingly enough, the couple, Kevin and Brittany, eventually apologized to Gary and Maria for purposely making their business look bad. Of course, how can you blame them? The show told them to do something, so how do you say no? Anyway, this individual story ends well as now Kevin and Brittany are regular Murphy's Law patrons and friends with Gary and Maria. Another tough part of the bar rescue experience for Murphy's Law was that the hands of the owners were tied. In the show, there is an infamous part where Maria is sitting at the bar gambling and hanging out. A clock appears on the screen that shows the length of her activity. The truth is, she couldn't do anything else. The show specifically told her not to help out with any bar operations, a tough task for someone who is used to significantly assisting. This is a theme you see throughout all the Bar Rescue episodes, so maybe now you won't think all those bar owners are actually that lazy. Maria credits the Bar Rescue personnel for being nice and helpful up front, but it soon became hard to accept it as genuine. As the filming went on and on, the hidden agenda of the producers started to become more visible. This wasn't the story of Murphy's Law, it was the story of a generic Bar Rescue plotline that used a bar in to help tell it. But Murphy's Law did go along with it. The employees played their parts, took their lumps, and put their smiles on after the bar was remodeled and renamed. Although I actually thought the 1930s old school style gambling hell makeover was pretty cool, Maria informed me that the staff, and probably more importantly the customers, didn't. That's going to do it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hit like if you did. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our videos in the future. I'll catch you next time. Goodbye. I just like the sound.